going to start with just these birch trays. My hooker's green dark, so and I'm dipping into a little bit of alizarin, and this is going to be my birch trees. They're just, I'm kind of, I'm using as a reference another painting I did. I don't care about drips. A lot of people can't. Sometimes drips will help you. They'll show you what you need. You know, I, and, and just, I might put one over here like this. And then I think I'm going to put water here. This will be good. This will be a nice fall scene. A little bit of water back here, but this is all going to be grasses back in here. Was my hand in the way when I was doing this? It was fine. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll make a little bit of land back here. Maybe a tiny little house just right here. I'm just designing and then um, to make it look, let's do some um, pine trees. The branches kind of point up. So many people want to make them pointing down. It's just a habit, but they kind of go off to the side. They go off to the side and up towards the sun. And then this is all a little confusing, isn't it? But um, I'll show you what I'm going to do next. So now I kind of have a design. This is all going to be some foliage and leaves up here. So what I'm going to do is take my white while it's still wet. I cleaned off my, I just rinsed my brush and I'm going to go over while it's wet. Just one. And that's just titanium white. Yep. It's going to soak in beautifully. Some branches here. And now I'm going to um, just put some, I'm going to take my hooker's green, I'm going to do some leaves. So I'm going to dip my hooker's green in some cadmium yellow medium, which makes a nice green. And I'm just going to start, it's going to be in front of the trees in some place and behind the trees in some place. You know, don't judge your painting too soon. Just, you know, so many people go, oh, I hate this, it's so bad. Well, it's too early. It's the design stage, and it's your preliminary um, brush strokes that you need to put down to get the results you want later. So you just have to be patient. Don't judge it. Don't let anybody else stand around you and go, oh, what are you doing? Because it's not going to help you. So that's enough green. Now I might just see what it's like if I throw a little bit. I'm going to take orange. It's not on the list, but it's just a cadmium orange, plain cadmium orange. I've been experimenting with it. Oh, I love Whoa. that. Isn't that pretty? I put a little bit of Naples yellow with it, that butterscotchy yellow. Not the cad yellow, but the... You, know. you can just try something if it doesn't work. When it's dry, you can go over it. These are the fall leaves. Kind of pretty. I might, you know, I'm just going to let these be for a little bit. And then I've got all my, I'm going back to the cadmium yellow medium, and I'm just going to take my brush and just now I'm using the one inch. This is a this canvas is I think it's like 20 inches by 20 inches. So it's pretty big for this canvas, but I'm you know I'm comfortable with a big brush. 
This is my lake back here. I'm going to tuck it behind these trees a little bit. This is a, I picked up a phthalo blue, which is really intense. Ooh. Yeah. You got to be careful with it. You always have to kind of tone it down with white or light blue. It's wild. It wants to take over. I was terrified of, when, terrified of it when I did watercolors. Um, that's my lake. This is going to be all um, trees back in here. And all right, I'm gonna get I'm gonna go to a smaller brush, my half inch angle. And I'm gonna go back in with my hooker's green and my I can't really tell, but it's CAD. Yeah, the CAD. No, don't worry if you um, you remember when you were a kid and you were learning how to use watercolors and if you if you put a color up next to it and it bled, you just panicked. Well, people are still afraid of that and don't be because I like I like when it bleeds a little bit together. It just gives the painting some movement. <laughs> and uh, that's another thing a lot of my students won't accept. But you can always fix it later to the way you like it. See, I'm just cutting in my sky back here. Now, after this dries, um, I'm going to go back in and do my, um, after, because this white is soaking into the dark. When it dries, I'm going to do the next step, which would be to really pop out my birch trees. And that'll probably be about all I have to say. You know, notice how that little bit of red from the from the background. I mean, you know the undercoating. The, yeah, the base. <laughs> it just it just always pops out and seems like just the right places. I don't know. I, I just find that exciting. A lot of brush strokes on here, but it'll come together. You know, sometimes you just got to try to cover up as much, you know, the red area, bigger red areas, because then it gives you a better um, idea of what you have. So here it is. It's basically covered. It's soaking wet. I'm going to let it dry. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to finish it. So um, here you go. And just look at it now, and then I'll be back. Um, in a second to when it's dry and a good way to make your painting dry it depends on where you live of course but put it out in the sun works so fast you can also use a hair dryer but the sun if, as long as it's not too humid um, it, it really does cook it nice it just it just bakes it so all right I'll be right back I we're back um, this is dried I didn't take it outside I just let it dry while we kind of looked at what we have made. We're, we're trying to adjust um, lighting and so on and so forth, but we're, we're getting there. Now watch me pop these trees out because it's dry. Look how much the white has, well it is a little bit wet, but look how much of the white has soaked into that dark hookers. So I'm going to take my smaller brush and I'm going to dip into some white and maybe a little bit of maples and I'm just going to hit the left side of all these trees. I'm going to break it, break it up a little bit. And see these trees starting to pop out of our landscape. Ooh, I got a lot of white there. Notice how that gray undertone 
kind of really works for us, doesn't it? You could add a tiny touch of Naples to your yellow to make it even brighter, like the sun is coming, shining on it. You know, everything is really about light and how it hits things and defines things. And I will probably um, be sure, you know, before I do this finished one, I'll, I'll go back in again and play with it, but not too much. I'm going to pop this house out a little bit here with some white paint. A little house on the lake. I'm going to put a shadowy color on the other side, which is kind of a purple and a blue. I'm going to go back in and do a little bit more details with my pine trees back there. Hookers, I mean, yeah, hooker screen and um, cad yellow. Some big trees going in behind here. Maybe I'll make a little. I'll take some Naples yellow and do a little beach here. Always break up your line. Don't ever make it continuous. That still reads as a line, a continuous area, but it's broken. And it's just way more interesting. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> way more interesting than um, if, it, if it were just going all the way across. And then I'm going to... Um, go in with my I've kind of gone all over the place with colors in this one. This is some grasses. I'm going to start to define some more grasses. I used my big fat brush to get these this feeling, but don't do it everywhere, just in a few places here and there. And that's just cad yellow yep. medium? Okay. Yep. And here's and more hookers. Yeah, going dark over there. I'm just kind of showing you this one area. I can work it all the way across. Um, you know, as I'm, as I'm painting and finishing this painting. I'll probably, you know, and then I'm going to go back up and do some more leaves. I'm just going to go back over everything after it dries. Here's some of that orange. Oh, it's so bright. So, you can see how I'm going to, and I'm just going to go in with some pure hooker's green. Boy, do I go through a lot of hooker's green, everybody. I'll tell you, when I go to the store, I buy several tubes at a time. Um, and then I'm going to take some of the dark, I'm going to take the hooker's green, maybe with a little burnt sienna. And I'm just going to kind of You know how the birch trees have these markings on them. Just kind of break it up. I'll probably go back in with white again a few times. And if you want, you could um, just to pop out another area or whatever. If you, at the very end, if you want to just kind of indicate that there may be some little white wildflowers down here. If you want, you don't have to. It's just an idea. It just kind of gives it that. I'm just showing you kind of how to, to bring it to a, a finish. And then I'm going to take the side of this angle brush. Now this angle brush is not natural hair. It's synthetic. So it's stiffer it holds less water and I can have I have more control and paint so I can just kind of at the end indicate that there's some branches here and that's your half inch right that's a half inch yep and just kind of going over everything and it doesn't have to just be I 
You could also do it with just plain dark hookers in some places. It's a little, that's a little thick. And my seam is coming together. And then um, maybe I'll make, give some life to this little house here. It's a little boathouse or something. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just playing now. Don't play too much because that's what we do. We just want to work it to death. Work it, work it, work it. I would probably, you know, let this dry again and then go to a finishing point at some point. And before I put this up, this video up, uh, I'll have the total finished painting um, ready for you to see before we get started. So you'll know what, I'm, what my goal was here. I'm going to add a little white to this light blue. A little brighter sky back here. Always take your if you're if you're traveling with your sky, you want to just keep going around things. It's that negative painting. So fun. It's kind of acting like it's like a cloud back there, and then it could get darker blue as we go up. And that's basically my scene. So. Um, give it a try if you feel like it and it's just fun so um, I will finish this a little bit more when I'm sitting right in front of it instead of standing off to the side and go in with maybe even a smaller brush and just you know tweak out some some more branches not too much not too much but um, and that's it okay so that's basically it and um, I'm pretty much finished with this painting and I'll probably wait till it dries again and I'll go in with my small brush, maybe even a smaller brush than this. Sometimes I bring out a little tiny, um, let me get it, the little tiny square brush and I don't know what size this is. I'm sorry, I can't help you with that. Is that still Princeton Dakota series? It's still a series? Princeton, okay. yeah. But I might go in and just do some really small branches. I'll wait for this to dry again, and then I'm going to go in and pop out my color one more time, my white and my birch trees, and uh, just in, in some more grasses. And that's it. That's all I really want to say. I want to leave some to the imagination of the viewer. I want to say it with as few brush strokes as I can, because I think that makes for exciting painting. And it is a painting. I'm not trying to make it look as real as possible. That's not my goal. Um, you, what you want to do as a painter is just get to somebody emotionally and uh, let them see the beauty in nature the way you see it. So, all right. And uh, so, yeah, I'll show you in the, when the, before the video goes up. I'll have the finished painting to show you. Thanks a lot. See you next time.